Hey, I'm Maxim Renault. I write for Yamaha Factory Monster Earth. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Hi, my name is Glenn Koldenoff, writing for Monster Energy Yamaha Factory MGP team. Boom! <laughs> yes! We have a winner! I think when you think of Maxime Renault, uh, a guy who's just won the uh, MX2, MX2 World Championship, who surprised quite a few people at La Capelle earlier on in the year uh, with a 1 1. We kind of had expectations about what he could possibly do on a 450. But nothing prepared us for that performance in Redbud when you're taking on some of the best riders in the world. People like Tomac, um, you've got the exciting Jet Lawrence. I, I, I think Maxime Renault has, has gone beyond all expectations this year. It was such a huge performance for himself and for, for Team France. I can only anticipate more of this coming for 2023 season. Hey, I'm Maxime Renault. I write for Monster Energy Yamaha Factory MXGP team. Got it. I had the uh, pleasure of going over and, and visiting uh, Maxine in the, the Wilvo camp uh, late December. One of the things that came across to me uh, and something I was really impressed with was, was just how strong he was um, within his mind. Maxime Renault has been a revelation for me because he was a surprise to me when he won the MX2 World Championship. I, I simply didn't see it coming. I didn't know as much about him as I should have and he surpassed my expectations every step of the way and, and he's only done more of that as he's gotten onto the 450. To see him you know, shoot out of the gate the way he did early in the season, battling for race wins. I don't know any other rider who is that dedicated or to, to focus on his goal like, like he's doing. And sometimes that's also his biggest challenge. He, he knows that and I also know it because the, for me, my biggest challenge since I started working with him was like to break him down. Renault goes wide, that leaves the door open for Kietz to go through, and he has done, but there's going to be more banging! And Renault comes off worse, he lost his footing at the bottom of the hill. Somebody, oh, there's uh, Maxim Renault, goes down hard, gets landed on, oh, oh by bikes and body, oh man. Five here is, oh, Dwarf! Wow! He changed his line last minute and forced Renault wide. There's a oh! big crash there. Was that Sewer? Could have wow. been Holdenhoff. It was definitely one of those. Sewer. Renault. Renault. Renault down. That was a big crash for Maxim Renault. And that bike is uh, definitely battered and bruised as well as the rider. Oh, so close to being hit by a 100 kilo, 110 kilo bike. That would not have ended well. I'm Kenny van Dure. Uh, I'm training the Monster Energy Yamaha Factory Riders uh, since two years now. Uh, last year was my first year with uh, Kamiya MX2. Now in 2022, it's my second year and uh, I'm also the coach of uh, Maxime and Glenn. I think Kenny brought a lot of um, professionality in how I, I, I get ready for the season. Before I was just focusing on cardio, you know, and like I said, I'm, I'm someone that always pushed to the limits. So I, every time I was going on cycling or running, I was just running till I, till I die. That was just uh, the goal, you know, killing myself. When we started working together, he had no hesitation. So what we, do, what, what we were doing, it was going all in, but sometimes less is more. And now he start to realize that you need to be fit on Sunday. So you don't need to win or you don't need to win GPs during the week to always reach the limit. He made me look foolish. I doubted him on broadcasts, I doubted him in interviews, and he has been nothing short of phenomenal. And I think 
he's going to improve upon that because going into 2023, he's going to be more experienced. He's going to learn from some of the mistakes he made. He'll be able to avoid some of, uh, I think, the, the crashes and the unforced errors that he had. And he's, he's going to be a factor in this championship. You look at the, the landscape, we, you know, Tim Geiser will be out due to injury. Jeffrey Hurling is coming back from serious injury. And Maxime Renault kind of sitting in the shadows with no one really looking at him as the favorite. He could very much surprise us. Before I was ne almost never to the gym. I was just doing maybe some core and core exercise, but no balance and stuff. And can you, I think he brought really a lot of um, young generation style of physical, physical, uh, physical um, preparation that I didn't had. Because I, first of all, I, at first I didn't have the knowledge. And, and yeah, I was just like training on, on the old, old school way, you know? And bringing that, I think, got me a better athlete in general for motocross, but also in, in general. And yeah, working with him brought me for sure a lot of professionality in, in, in preparing my body and myself for the season. Uh, my name is Vitaly Tonkov. I am team manager from uh, Monster Energy Yamaha factory mixed GP team. I saw he's, uh, he's really strong and fast, but uh, I didn't expect because I know GP is different because we see many times uh, good results from the riders on uh, pre-season races, but uh, GP is, is always different. Uh, it's, uh, the pressure from, from everywhere is uh, a lot more and it's, uh, he, he did quite good. Unbelievable, it's amazing, you know, going back from injury like that and such an injury and uh, making 3-1 on the races, it's unbelievable, I have no words, it's amazing weekend. I had also, I hurt my thumb this morning on a crash, I twisted it completely, so it was really not, uh, not easy, but uh, we could make it a really good day, so I'm super happy. Yeah, in 2022, you know, I got into the season very sharp, you know, I, I started off in, in the UK with a podium, good speed, very solid. I knew I was ready, you know, I was in shape. Uh, even Mantua, cup, some hole shots. Uh, I had a few mistakes and still finished like fourth overall. I was actually really pissed about that, you know, because I could have won or going second, but I was still in a good place because long championship, you know. So after all of that, I came to Argentina and I felt strong, you know, super first moto and then things went wrong with a crash. Uh, on a jump with another rider, not really my mistake, just unlucky. Yeah, with a big, it ended with a big concussion, and this was a, a setback. You know, like uh, it took me two, three months to get back in shape, and that was where I lost so many points to Geyser last year. You know, no concussions are a scary thing. Uh, anytime you have a heavy injury like that, and the recovery is difficult. You know, everyone as a racer is used to a broken bone or things that heal quickly and, and there's no long-term worry. Concussions are something that scientists are learning more about every day and the lingering effects and the long-term residual side effects are, are difficult to, to handle for a lot of people and, and it can affect you emotionally and they're, they have accumulative effects. You always want to be careful about racking up numerous concussions. So yeah, it definitely could weigh on Jeremy. Uh, last season, it's something that it's hard to shake to get out of your out of your mind, um, knowing you know every racer assumes risk, but the heavier the injury, that more that risk weighs on you moving forward. So it was nice to see him rebound and uh, get back to form. But concussions are a different type of injury, and uh, I think they affect you. I, mentally, of course, but I think the, the psychological effects are a bit different than a standard injury would be. You know, I had the first GP two weeks after my concussion and till Friday or even Saturday morning I spun a few laps and I was like, I'm not sure if I'm going to manage to ride. But I went through in a safe way, you know, like uh, because I'm not going to do something really stupid. But it was tough, even two weeks after to get a motor in, you know, so not easy times, but the thing was, in long term, I never struggled with arm pump in my whole career. Maybe a few times, yes, when your bike doesn't work or you feel a bit stiff, but 
for those three months, every time I went on the bike, I had arm pump and I couldn't explain why. I said, guys, I get arm pump every time. Like, why, you know? And it just took so long. Maybe I just was a bit more tight on the bike because something, you know, with the concussion, some, something, I wasn't scared, but deep inside, maybe there was something. And it took me a long time to get the confidence back you know then we started to change the bike you know to make this better and better and then it clicked and we were back you know so yeah, it's a shame it took that long but I think and a, a guy not being an athlete with this sort of impact on a brain I think he, he, he probably will be out for two two years not being able to work or you know what I mean we we come back very quick you know and welcome to Udavalla in Sweden. It's the MXGP of Sweden and it's round 15. Monster Energy Yamaha MXGP team, you know, they have an assortment of riches with, with Maxine, Jeremy and Glenn. You know, Glenn being the, the eldest on the team now, um, the younger Maxine coming through and the ever consistent uh, vice world champion in Jeremy Seaworth. You know, Glenn in 2023, he's probably, you know, looking at maybe his last year or last, you know, last couple of years on factory machinery. He wants that world championship. He wants to win. And I think we're going to see the best of Glenn Koldenoff in 2023. Get a gate drop here. Looking over to the right hand side, it's one of the Yamahas. Well, all three Yamahas going in the first turn. Yeah, Max and Renault leading the way, the 959, the 259. And then we've got uh, Seawit in second. And Max and Renault exits the final turn. He wins race one here in Sweden. That's a big win for him. Seawit second, Koldenoff making it a Monster Energy Yamaha, one, two, three. Uh, Maxim crashed in second motor, and uh, we were so close uh, to this result, one, two, and three. And uh, <clears throat> I was thinking, we are so close. And then in Finland, which I didn't expect it because it's uh, some something sp special uh, track, you know, sandy track. And uh, I know someone from our riders will be really good on this track, but I didn't expect it that all three riders will be in uh, top three. And uh, this makes even more excited and more uh, as happy when this happened in, in Finland, because almost till last lap, uh, it was not sure, you know. And when this happened, this was a really amazing feeling. This is yeah, something really special. The biggest success in 22 was definitely the GP of Finland. We were there with all three riders on the box. One, two, one, first, second and third. And uh, yeah, for us it was uh, the greatest success ever. And probably it never happened in the MSGP class. And also, I think, not for Yama. Yeah, this is another story, you know. We shared the podium with three of us, you know. And I mean, we didn't, you, you can't plan this. I mean, I think in Sweden, the week before, we finished one motor, one, two, three. And we were already stoked. Wow, this is amazing. Okay, after half an hour, you go back to the track next motor, you got to focus on yourself. But still, this is so cool for the brand, so cool. And then in Finland, after the second motor, no, none of us even thought about this. They told us, hey, you're one, two and three. And the moment we realized it was like so cool, you know, and I can imagine for the team and for Yamaha, this is even bigger than for us because we are individuals. We want us to be good. But sure, it makes us happy if, if we are all good. But for you know, for the team or for Yamaha, this is huge. And and yeah, I think it's never been done before. So to repeat that, I think uh, not easy. <laughs> I'm Louis Vosters, team owner of the Monster Energy Yamaha factory team, and I'm from the Netherlands in Bergijk. When I started working in 2016, I came uh, work with my brother as a mechanic 
And uh, yeah, sure, I was thinking I will stay longer with my brother and, uh, and I didn't expect it that I will work in the MixGP team. So after it happened that my brother could not uh, uh, continue riding for the team and uh, I really asked me and I also want myself to stay in the team. Yeah, around 16, 17, this, this idea more or less started to build a new workshop. And for me, it was really important to build a workshop where we can work on a professional way, when a rider can do what he wants to do, like a gym and to live and to be there. But also that everybody feels good, you know? So that's why we made it really nice. We made it professional. And yeah, I think everybody feels good when they are here. Yeah, I mean, when you walked in, well, what did you think? <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. It's, uh, it's an amazing place. It's pretty big uh, for our rider. I believe there's everything we need. I mean, we make use of the gym almost every day. And uh, it's good to come to here. It's only 30 minutes from my house. So uh, yeah, we have a very, very good base here. And you know, the, the contact between the mechanics and, and the team, you know, it's really important. And Immediately from, wow, this is like, yeah, top level. We had already a nice workshop. We was like uh, 100 meters from here. That was already a nice workshop. And then Louis had a plan to build a complete new facility with all possibilities for riders, uh, mechanics. Everything uh, is happening here in the house, in the workshop, to, uh, to make it happen. It's a really big workshop. <laughs> I was really thinking like, wow, it's, uh, you have to scream to, to speak to the guy on the... I was, I was just like, yeah, amazed. It's, this place is like no one else I ever saw. It's, I even like sometimes struggle to understand how it's possible that uh, it's so ordered, clean for a workshop, you know, like it's everything so nicely organized. And, and yeah, they, they have experience, obviously. They have been here for, for some time. They know what to do. They know where they go. They know how to develop bikes and stuff. So everything what Yama puts into place and uh, Yama on the, on the technical part and Vilvo on the team part, it's really made for riders. And um, we have a really good environment here. We have everything to, to win. We have, I think it's made for the riders, you know, and uh, we can't really ask for more. Twenty twenty two, we didn't see the real Glenn Koldenhoff. We only seen glimpses of what he could be, and then France it started to turn around. We seen the best of Glenn Koldenhoff in Finland. You know, that's the guy who who literally could become world champion. If he has everything in line, his mindset, his physical training, his racecraft, then he is a guy who can win that world championship. Uh, it's discipline. Yeah, like the way of how he's uh, always so much like in he never will that one piece of puzzle he will never leave on on the side he it will always need to be perfect and that's also his strong point but on the other hand it can also be sometimes his weak, weak point you know like it's not everything go as planned as you want it to be and uh because you know like in a race a lot of things can happen and you need to step over and but for me, Glenn is uh, one of the most also same like Maxime, but Glenn is very structured, like organized, and that makes him uh, like a, a super athlete. Uh, I think a lot of changes. I mean, uh, I changed uh, the physical trainer, the coach. Obviously, I started working this year with Kenny and Yente. Uh, those are the two guys who, who make our training schedule. And um, yeah, that was a change. So. Um, other than that, I stayed with Yama. Uh, we did some more testing during the, uh, during the off-season and, and just normal things. I mean, Louis Vosters must be thinking, you know, when he signed Glenn Koldenhoff, that I have got a world champion in the making. You know, he has 
he has the ability to become a world champion. He has the mindset to become a world champion. It's just putting those pieces together. And I think under the guidance of Kenny Van Durham with his physical, physical training, how he's feeling, how he's approaching races, you know, he has everything available to him now. Everything is in place for Glenn Coldenoff to be 2023 world champion. Does that sound good? Sound really good. Sound really good. Is that the goal? It's the goal. Yes, I can be 2023 world champion. Yeah, we want more. Yes, yes, for sure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna work for it and, and give my, give my best. It's, it's a high level sport. There, there are so many, so many things you cannot really control. You know, you try to control the most, but there are also some part where you just have to let it go and see where it leads you. And you have to, to give a lot of confidence into that. Very hungry. I may be old uh, at this time, I turn 32 next year, uh, with Jeremy van Hoorbeek leaving uh, this year, I will be the oldest one together with Fabre. Fabre is just uh, yeah, a few months of me and uh, I think uh, that's a lot of experience and I should use that. Yes, my only goal left is to be world champion, you know, I mean, five times five world champion sounds like, oh, you know, you missed out five times being world champion, but Three out of these five, let's say, I, I won five world championship. I didn't lose the world title, you know, so you are happy with that. But maybe two times I, I lost the world title and this is what is painful. And that's what, why we are here for, you know, um, I've been working harder than ever before. Food. <laughs> Definitely food. Because I, for me, it's not a sacrifice like everything I do here. Uh, uh, just killing myself on, on the sport and, and, and going to ride and, and riding the bike is just what I love to do. I really, really enjoy what I do. It's not faking, you know, like uh, you, when you tell me go for five hours cycling, I will enjoy every, every kilometers of it because I just love what I do. And when you love your job and love what you do, you always do it better than someone that goes and, and don't love the full package. I really love the full package of it. So, um, but yeah, sometimes when I see a good steak or, or some, some really fat, fat things, you know, uh, when I go to grandma and, and she pushed me, she, she, you know, she tried to open my mouth to feed me, you know, I'm like, no grandma, I, I can't. And that's, that's the tough, tough part of the sport.